Hi everyone, our subject today is hearing loss in pediatrics. Basics. Hearing loss can be conductive or sensory neural or mixed due to problems along with the peripheral auditory pathway, external ear, middle ear, inner ear, and auditory nerve. Conductive hearing loss is usually due to problems in the external and middle ear. Sensory neural hearing loss is usually due to inner ear and auditory nerve problems. Any cases of hearing loss, however, are progressive and may not be detected at birth. Children with acquired or late onset hearing loss may present with a more subtle problem such as school, uh, poor school performance. Sometimes children with fusion or stachian tube dysfunction present with a complaint of hearing loss. The role of primary care practitioner is to identify the hearing loss and make appropriate referral for comprehensive evaluation and treatment. Identifying hearing loss as early as possible is critical to minimize the adverse effect on speech and language and school performance. Hearing loss can be divided into mild, difficulty keeping up with the conversation, especially in a noisy situation, moderate, difficulty keeping up uh, with the conversation if not using a hearing aid, severe, rely on lip reading and sign language. Noise-induced hearing threshold shifts. Increase in the threshold of audibility caused by a prolonged excessive noise. Previously thought to occur mainly in adults whose occupation exposed them to ex excessive level of noise. Now recognized as causing hearing loss in people of all ages from a musical concert, firework, uh, snowmobile, lawn monar, toys, and etc. History. Determine the onset and progression of hearing loss, unilateral or bilateral, associated symptoms such as pain, tinnitus, vertigo, bleeding, fever. Determine if the patient has a history of normal age-appropriate auditory response due to use language and speech developmental milestone. Inquire about past medical history, paying particular attention to risk factors. For older children, inquire about noise exposure, trauma, toxic ingestion, or exposure. History of bacterial meningitis and characteristic of syndromes associated with hearing loss are risk factor at any age. A family history positive for hearing loss developing under age of 30 years, kidney abnormalities, different uh, colored eyes, white for look of hair, night blindness, cardiac arrhythmia, or sudden cardiac death should be raised suspicion for hereditary causes of hearing loss. Some red flags suggesting language delay include not starting to not startle to loud no, uh, sound by three months of age, not vocalizing by six months, not localizing speech or other sound by nine months, not bubbling multiple sound or syllable by 12 months, not saying mama or dada specifically by 13 months, Less than 50% of speech understandable by 24 months. Not following a one-step command by 13 to 15 months. Physical examination. Special attention should be given to the head and neck exam. Abnormal facial feature, hypertelorism, microcephaly, hypoplasia of uh, facial structure, heterochromia of iris, abnormal hair findings, white for look, cleft lip or palate, malformation of the ear, including dimple or skin tags. Eye placement and color should be noted. Microphthalmia or retinitis could suggest congenital infection. 
abnormalities of the tympanic membrane or titis media, perforation, cholesteatoma, hemotympanum. Skin and neurological examination are also important. Any characteristics suggesting suggestive of genetic syndrome should be noted. Weber test. Striking the turning fork and then place on bridge of forehead, nose, or teeth. Ask the patient if the sound is louder in one ear or the other. Normal hearing equal bilaterally. Conductive hearing loss. Vibratory sound is louder on the bad side. Sensory oral hearing loss. Vibratory sound is louder on the good side. Rene test compares bone conduction, striking, and place the turning fork on the mastoid bone to air conduction, striking, and hold the turning fork lateral to the external ear canal. Normal hearing, air conduction more than bone conduction. <clears throat> Conductive hearing loss, bone conduction more than air conduction. Sensory neural hearing loss, rainy test not as helpful as both air and bone conduction may be decreased proportionally. How to approach the child with hearing loss after performing history and physical examination, review of language development, perform pneumatic otoscopy. If it is abnormal, this is, could be serum impaction or other foreign body, otitis media, perforated tympanic membrane, cholesteatoma, microtia, oral atresia, tympanic membrane, or ossicular abnormality. If it is a normal otoscopy, perform tympanometry and hearing test. If it is a normal tympanogram on the normal hearing, this is acoustic trauma. If it is a normal tympanogram and abnormal hearing test, patient need a referral for a multidisciplinary team, differential diagnosis, syndromic hereditary hearing loss like Wanderberg syndrome, Albert syndrome, Usher syndrome, Pindard syndrome, Gervell syndrome, Lange-Nelson syndrome. Non-syndromic hereditary hearing loss, noise-induced hearing loss, neurofibromatosis, autotoxic drug or toxin, head trauma, other causes of hearing loss like infection include in congenital infection. If it is abnormal tympanogram, tympanogram consisted with otitis media with effusion. If it is yes, this is otitis media with effusion. If it is no, perform hearing. Uh, if it is normal hearing, if it is yes, differential diagnosis, tympanosclerosis, perforated tympanic membrane, stachyny tube dysfunction. If it is abnormal hearing, patient also need referral, differential diagnosis, adhesive otitis, uh, ossicular uh, discontinuity, perforated tympanic membrane. Top tips. The most uh, popular screening is evoked auto-autistic emission which is inexpensive and the results are easy to interpret. However, it has a high failure rate, about 40% for one, day one and two of life. Children who fail the evoked uh, autoacoustic uh, auto imaging test or these at risk like family history, intrauterine infection or craniofacial anomalies must be evaluated by auditory brainstem response. <clears throat> Although most uh, otitis media with effusion are transient, some children, like those with uh, Down syndrome or cleft palate, are at high risk of developing persistent effusion. Although the insertion of uh, grommet uh, for otitis media with effusion is effective in uh, improving language acquisition, this effect lasts as long as the grommets are patent. Long-term benefits are not certain. Antibiotic, antihistamine, decongestant, and steroid are usually ineffective.
red flag. A child with the unilateral progressive deafness, vertigo, and tinnitus should be suspected as having acoustic neuroma. Children with neurofibromatosis at a higher risk of developing this tumor. For any child who present with the psychosocial problems, hyperactivity, conduct problems, or delayed language and communication, a hearing test is essential. When parents suspect that their child hearing is inadequate or delayed, this must be taken seriously. A rapid referral to an audiological center should be made. Although otitis media with effusion is common, it reduces the conduction sound entering the ear for up to 40 decibel, thus delaying the crucial years of language acquisition. Exposure to high intensity sound, 80 to 100 decibel in rock music can cause temporarily hearing loss. Sudden and very loud sound, more than 140 decibel, like gunfire or bombs, may cause permanent hearing loss after one exposure. Mild conductive hearing loss is common with otitis media and normally improve with the resolution of the effusion. Small tympanic membrane perforation have little effect on hearing, but large perforation may affect hearing. Tympanometry provide information about tympanic membrane, compliance, and middle ear pressure. It is most helpful in identifying middle ear effusion and perforation of the tympanic membrane. Before age 4 months, the excessive compliance of the ear canal limits the usefulness of this test. Newborn screening program relies on autoacoustic imaging test and auditory brainstem evoke response test to evaluate infant hearing. The advantage of uh, auditory brainstem evoke testing over uh, autoacoustic imaging test is uh, potential to identify an auditory neuropathy. Once a child can cooperate, a pure tone audiometry with bone and air conduction result is recommended. Most children can be rely reliably tested by this method by age of 4 years. Referral for testing via other method, depending on the age of the child, may be indicated if a child is too young to complete a pure tone audiometry or if they are unable to cooperate with the testing. A temporary shift in hearing threshold after exposure to potentially injurious sound can precede permanent noise-induced hearing loss. Permanent induced hearing loss has been attributed to a high level of uh, continuous noise, music, recreational vehicle, power tools, and high-intensity sound of short duration like gunfire and firecrackers. Referral to multidisciplinary center is ideal to provide evaluation and treatment by audiology, uh, otolaryngology, and speech pathology. Genetic consultation may be helpful since approximately half of the sensory neural hearing loss causes are associated with genetic etiology. Genetics can aid in providing a specific diagnosis, prognostic factor, and counseling on associated risk and conditions. Genetics are estimated to be a factor in approximately 50% of cases of sensory neural hearing loss. Two-thirds of cases are not associated with any syndrome. Genetic counseling is becoming an increasingly important part of the evaluation of hearing loss as advanced in genetics are identified mitochondrial disorder and the mutation associated with an increased susceptibility to deafness. Approximately 80% of cases of sensory oral hearing loss are inherited as autosomal recessive triad. 
Hearing impairment associated with some genetic disorder may not develop until later in childhood. Effects of autotoxic drugs may not appear for up to six months after exposure to the drugs. Aminoglycoside, loop diuretics, and chemotherapy agent, especially cisplatin, are the most common offender. Quinine, lead, and arsenic have also been identified as causes of hearing loss. Both conductive and sensorineural hearing loss have been reported in children who experience head trauma due to temporal bone fracture or inner ear con concussion. Spontaneous resolution usually occur. Infection, meningitis, Lyme disease, parvovirus, measles, mumps, rubella are rare causes of sensorineural hearing loss. Perilim fistula, vascular insult to the inner ear and the first episode of minor disease should also be considered. The tympanogram in otitis media with effusion is typically rounded or flat. Thank you for your listening.